Hi, and welcome to a Maker's Making Change tutorial. In this video, we'll show you how to build an assistive switch from our open source library called the Interact Switch. If you want to find the build files, build materials, or other information about the Interact Switch, please find the project page for this device in the website or in the video description. First, we must get our supplies and tools ready to ensure that we have all the components for the build. This includes a 3D printed button top, switch base, switch holder, and switch insert, as well as a limit switch, three screws, and a 3.5 millimeter cable. The tools used in this build are flush cutters, a small Phillips head screwdriver, a hobby knife, tweezers, wire strippers, solder, and with that, a soldering iron. If you're following along in the build, plug in your soldering iron to allow it to heat up. Make sure the tip of the iron is clear from everything. Finally, make sure to wear your safety glasses and wash your hands after soldering. For this step, you'll need your flush cutters, wire strippers, a limit switch, cable, and switch base. Unravel your mono cable and notice the two ends. Using flush cutters, cut one of the jacks off of the cable. We now need to strip the wire using the wire stripper's 16 gauge hole. In this case, the biggest hole. Gently squeeze the wire strippers on the mono cable approximately 15 millimeters from the end and pull off the wire casing. This will expose two internal wires. Similarly, each of these wires must now be stripped with the 26 gauge hole. Strip off approximately two to four millimeters off the end. Now twist these wires separately in your fingers to bring all of the individual strands together. Now take the 3D printed switch base and locate the wire hole and push the now stripped wire through the wire hole as shown. Gently pull and make sure the two separate wires do not get tangled. You may have to retwist them a bit. Now get familiar with your limit switch and notice that the button on the top is closer to one side than the other. That's the side that we want to work on. The two prongs underneath that button are the ones we're going to connect the wire that we just prepared. Now push the two stripped wires underneath the two prongs on the button side of the switch and then twist the remaining wire around the prong to secure it. The two copper wires should not touch each other at this point and should each be separately secured to the two prongs on the button side of the switch. It is now time to solder the connection. First take your solder and touch the tip of the iron to it briefly. This is called tinning. Hold the hot tip of the iron to one of the prongs of the switch and push the solder into the heated piece. Do not be alarmed by the light puff of smoke. And be careful to not touch the hot tip to the black plastic piece of the switch, just to the metal prong. Continue pushing the solder into the heated piece until you see it melt and coat the copper colored wire and the prong of the switch together. Repeat this for the other prong. Now remove the solder and the soldering iron tip. When completed, you should see hardened shiny solder making the connection between the mono cable wire and the switch prong. We can now take the soldered switch and cable and feed it back through the hole of the switch base. Make the cable follow the curved indented path in the switch base. Do this until there is just enough cable to allow the switch to reach the rectangular base. Line up the switch with the rectangular slots pointed down. Make sure that the button is on the left side of the mono cable hole in the switch base. This can be seen here. Gently push in on the switch. The switch will not be flush with the rectangular piece. It can only push down so far, so be careful not to damage the bottom prongs. For this step, you'll need the button top, switch holder, and switch insert. Look on the inside of the switch button, and you'll notice that there are little rectangular holes and slots on the inside. The really small thin ones are for the switch insert, and the bigger ones are for the switch holder slots. Take a look at the switch insert, and notice one side has a raised circle. When you go to insert one of the ends into one of the small rectangular holes, Make sure that circle is not facing the inside of the switch. 
and is facing outwards. Now fit the other two ends of the switch insert into the thin rectangular holes. The third one can be a little bit tricky. A tip is to get the other two in and then just wiggle that one down. Now take the switch holder and place it on top of the switch insert with the cylindrical holes facing out. Orientate the switch holder so that the three legs go into the larger rectangular slot and the raised pieces go over the switch insert. You'll know you have a proper fit if the switch holder slides within the rectangular holes and when it's turned upside down is easily pressed on. As you can see, one side of mine gets stuck. If this happens to you, or if you're at the end of your build and switch isn't as smooth as you'd like it to be, check the feet out on the switch holder. Some may have some excess filament causing friction between the components. To fix this, take some sandpaper and sand off the edges of the feet to smooth them. If you don't have sandpaper, you can use the flush cutters and cut a very small bit off the edges. For the final step, grab your now assemble button and switch base. Check the bottom of your switch base to see if the holes are covered with support material. In my case they are, so I'll use my tweezers to remove any extra material covering the hole. You may also like to use the hobby knife, or even the screwdriver to help in this process as well. Once you uncover one of the holes, repeat this process for the two remaining holes. Once your part is cleaned, we can now assemble the two pieces. The three holes on the switch holder match the three holes on the switch base. Place the button assembly on top of the base assembly and line up the holes. Then take one of the three screws and place it into the hole on the bottom of the base and begin threading the screw in with the screwdriver. We want the screw to go both through the base of the hole and then into the switch holder. This can be a bit tricky to line up but once the screw is peeking through the base, it will be easier then to line up the hole on the switch holder and then continue tightening the screw until you feel resistance. Be careful to not over tighten and tighten them all loosely at first. Go back over the screws and tighten them until you feel resistance. Be careful not to over tighten them as that could break the 3D print. Congratulations, you've completed your build of the Interact switch. Now test the switch by pressing it to hear it click. As a bonus to see the Interact switch in use, I have one of our other devices, a switch adapted toy. The adaptive toy can be controlled by plugging in the Interact switch to one of the adapted ports. Now this means this toy is now switch accessible by use of the Interact switch. Thank you so much for watching our video and making the world a better place by volunteering for Makers Making Change.